Welcome to Live Effects. I'm Dave and this is where I do stuff with effects. In this video I want to show you how to read VEX coding that lies behind a VOP node and how to convert that into a single Wangle node. In my island series I used a VOP node to deform the guides for the procedural grass shader. The VOP node consists of a couple of nodes which uses the color of the guides to create a turbulent noise and adds it on top of our original position. That way the blade root is fixed on the surface and the position noise gets stronger towards the end of the blade. If you have not seen that episode, here's the gist of it. I created banded lines with a red gradient. Then I prepared the body of the island to have points where I wanted the lines to be copied on. Then I copied the lines on the surface and after that I created a VOP node that displaces the end of the blades and color it with a green ramp. When you start becoming more comfortable in writing VEX, you will be able to write any VOP node, no matter how complex, into a Wangle node. But regardless on how comfortable you are, this is a very helpful exercise to improve your understanding in VEX. So let's take this VOP node apart. First, we take the position and create a turbulent noise. The important parameters are promoted so that you can edit them outside of the builder. At the same time, we take the color vector which has the red to black gradient on each line. The root being red and the end black. We extract the float value of the red channel, then we use a fit to change the incoming values so that 0 becomes 1 and the biggest possible value of 0.6 becomes 0. The result will be multiplied with the noise and the product of that gets added onto the original position. Now, VOP nodes are nothing else than a big piece of coding that you dynamically build by creating these nodes here in the builder. Let's jump out of here and recreate a small setup here on the side so that we can see what exactly happens. Create a grid with a good amount of points and use the copied points hop. I will feed in the lines from the original setup and here we have the slightly bent lines with the red gradient. If we connect the VOP node, you can see the displacement and the painting from the ramp. For this demonstration I want to concentrate on the displacement, so let's pretend this ramp doesn't exist. If you want to know what the VOP node actually does, you can view the generated code by right-clicking on the node, hit VEX VOP options and then view the code. Most of what you can see here is not necessary for the operation we did here. But the VOP node takes into account what you could possibly do and generated all the possible interfaces you might need. Here we have the variables that the short program used, but again also a bunch of unneeded ones. Here it gets interesting. Each node in the builder creates a section of code which is marked with a comment that lets you know which node was the causer. This area right here is the initial input. And here begins the code of the turbulent noise. Again, this may be seem complicated, but once you develop an eye for this, you will be able to point out the essential lines. In this example, all of these lines are becoming obsolete if you know which type of noise you are going to use. Here the type is set to correct noise, which means that the only part that is getting used is this one. And here's the rest of the logic. We get the float from the color, we use a fit, multiply the noise by that shift and the product gets added on top of our initial position. And that is all we need to know to write the whole thing in a single wrangle node. Create a wrangle and first we create the interface that allows us the same options as the verb node. And that is a vector for the frequency, a float for the amp, another float for the roughness, an int for the turbulence, and another float for the attenuation. Then I set the sliders to values that resemble the turbulent noise from the VOP node. And now we can create the noise function. There are different types of noise functions. And a simple one is O noise. Here we can create the noise vector that needs the position times the frequency, then turbulence, roughness and at the end attenuation. If you want to also regard offset, you would need another vector variable that you then add on top of the frequency. The result needs to be multiplied with the amp to control the noise strength. Now we reached the point where the VOP node extracted the float from the color. 
Here we can directly fit the first element of the color vector with the same values we had in the VOP node. Then we create a new vector where we have the result of the noise multiplied by the created fit shift. And finally, we need to add the value on top of our original position. And with that, you have created a single wrangle that offers the same functionality as the VOP node. And since I'm sure some of you will bring this up, you can of course crush these lines together and write it in a single line. You could do that by taking the point position and add the noise on top of it, multiply it with amp and the fit range, all on the same line. Me personally, I prefer the longer form since it keeps the code more readable, but that's a matter of preference. I hope you found that useful and are back next time.